seven years ago, I posted a video on my YouTube channel, and it would become the most popular video I would ever post on my channel, at least up until this point in time. It was my review of the Midori Traveler's Notebook. It has garnered almost 400,000 views up to this point. It's even been featured on Japanese television. And the product which I will be reviewing is this. It's been a very popular video for me. And if I were smart, I would have followed it up with a lot more content about the Midori Traveler's Notebook, but I just felt, you know, I'd said pretty much what I needed to say. But a year later, I did post a video, a review of the passport size Midori Traveler's Notebook, and that was pretty popular too. I think it ended up with 150,000 views around there. You could see that on YouTube as well. But ever since I posted these videos, I've had people asking me to do follow-ups, asking me if I still use the Traveler's Notebooks, if I still recommend them, how are they set up now? And for the most part, like I've said, I've sort of avoided posting more videos on the Midori Traveler's Notebook, or as they're called now, the Traveler's Company Traveler's Notebook. I kind of liked Midori better. But enough people have asked me if I'm still using these notebooks and for an update on them that I thought it was finally time to do it. So this isn't really an update on the full size Traveler's Notebook because I have to admit, I don't use this all that often anymore. It's just a little too large for what I typically use a notebook for. But I do use the passport size almost every day. So here is my Traveler's Company, formerly Midori Traveler's Notebook, passport size, six years later. So here is my Midori Traveler's Notebook passport size, now called the Traveler's Company Traveler's Notebook passport size. See on the back here, it actually says Midori. This one made in Thailand. So you may notice that it has a few more scuffs, a few more scratches. It definitely looks its age. But after six years, I think it's still looking pretty good. But what's changed in six years? And how do I still use this? Why do I still use it? What do I use it for? Well, I just actually put on a brand new elastic here. I have one of these Midori repair kits that had the different elastic bands. I actually just cut off some of this orange band here and tied it in because the original band that had come with this notebook had just gotten so loose it wasn't really staying closed anymore. I used to actually have a little bit of wood that I used on top of this elastic band to help me grab it and open it, but I found that just pushing in like this, making a little divot, makes it perfectly easy to grab this and open the book, so no problem there. I used to have inside this book, you may remember from the original review, I had this zippered pocket. And I found that I just never really used it. On the original full-size Midori, I still do have a zippered pocket in there, and I do use that. Because when I'm using this, this is when I'm going on a trip or doing something where I need to carry more with me. The passport size for me is used more for an everyday tool, something that I want to write down ideas in. And so I didn't find myself needing paper clips or, or slots for cards, anything like that in the passport size Midori. So I took this out. I do still have inside two actual insert, inserts. I just replaced the lined insert. I was using it, I mean, I've gone through several of these, but I was using it for notes and things. Um, any little notes that I needed to take, I would write down ideas for videos. All that kind of stuff would go in the line notebook. So I just replaced that because it had gotten filled up for the most part. I still have this little bit of blotter paper because I often use fountain pens with this notebook. And I still have the original blank book. And I don't know that I'm going to keep this in here. I kind of like the thickness that it's at right now. This is, seems to be a good size for a notebook like this. And I always think maybe I'll want just a nice clean blank space for me to draw or doodle or whatever I may want to do. But I've never really used this blank insert in here. So I'm wondering if maybe I should put in a dot insert or maybe even a graph paper insert. We'll see. But for now, I'm keeping it 
two inserts, and then at the very end, we have this craft folder, which I do find very useful. If I get receipts or anything like that, I can pop them in here, and I keep my little Midori Pan Am faux baggage tag. I think this was from years ago. They had this whole Pan Am series of different accessories you could get. But this is great because it's a nice backer for when you're writing, has a nice grid there. So if you do have unlined pages, you can use that as a guide, has a little ruler, straight edge. It works quite well. Like I said, I use this mostly for just an everyday notebook. I used to use different things, and sometimes I still use things like field notes. Um, like I have a field notes cover here. I like field notes stuff, but I don't like how few pages are in each field notes notebook and also just how expensive they are. Sometimes it's about $14 for two notebooks or three notebooks for the refills. So I don't always use field, field notes. I often have little notebooks like this. This is sort of a Rhodia version of the classic kind of moleskin or moleskine, however you want to pronounce it, notebook. So I could use something like this, but I tend to gravitate more towards this, towards my traveler's notebook, because just look at the form factor here too. Quite a bit smaller than the Rhodia. Quite a bit smaller than this cover I have for the field notes. And even if you just look at the field notes itself, it's about the same size, maybe slightly taller than the passport size, obviously much thinner, but this is not too thick by any means whatsoever. So it's just a really good size. The one issue I've still had, and it's never really been rectified, is I still can't think of a really good way of carrying a fountain pen with this notebook. I don't have any really, really slim fountain pens. I actually did just order a Caveco Lilliput, so maybe that will be thin enough, because I would typically just get a pen and perhaps open up the cover, shove a pen inside, and then close it up. That's what I typically like to do, just something nice and compact and that's not gonna get in the way. I don't usually like having a big pen holder hanging off the side of the notebook, but anything that would actually fit inside the cover pretty much has to be a ballpoint pen. So this is a Zebra. I think this is a F701 or 702. I can't remember exactly, but it's all metal. If you have to use a ballpoint pen, this is not a bad ballpoint pen to use. Here's another kind of slimmer Zebra. This is the F402. Not bad. For fountain pens, you know, I like using my Lamy Safari on the go. I think I have the 1.1 millimeter stub on here right now, which I quite like, but it is just so fat. It does not work inside the notebook at all, obviously. I could hang it off maybe, but I like to be able to throw this in a pocket and it just, just doesn't work. So I'm hoping that maybe once I get the Caveco Lilliput, I'll be able to put it inside the cover and that'll work a little better. And then even my Lamy 2000, it's slimmer, but it's still not slim enough really. So I often use, don't freak out, a ballpoint pen, something like this Zebra, um, when I'm out and about on the go and I don't wanna have to deal with carrying, you know, maybe a separate sleeve with a fountain pen inside it. I have some of those leather sleeves. Just get a little ballpoint pen like this, slides right in the cover, it's pretty easy. Very compact. Just like that. So after six years, is there anything that I would change about the Traveler's Notebook? Not really. I think they really got it right with this. And obviously it's been copied a thousand times by a thousand different companies now. But just having the flexibility of putting in the inserts you want, the elastic band system that holds everything together. You may have seen the video I did where I kind of modified the elastic bands, but I've kept it that way since then. It looks like my blotting paper is getting a little worse for wear. I may need to put in a replacement one there soon, but it just works. It's a great form factor, and I think this size is really the sweet spot. It's perfect for a back pocket, um, and you can make it as thin or as thick as you want, as many inserts as you want, within reason. It just works. And again, as everyone always likes to point out, it ages beautifully. This is just a really nice, good quality leather. I don't know... 
I think they're around $40 new from the Traveler's Company website now. I'm sure you could get them cheaper on Amazon or other online retailers around the world. I can't exactly remember how much I paid initially. I don't think it was anywhere close to $40 when I got the passport size, but would I spend $40 now? I don't know. If you can find it on sale, I think it's definitely worth it. 40 bucks might be a bit of a stretch just for this leather sleeve, but it is really good quality leather, and this is six years later, and it's still going strong. So I am still quite pleased with my Midori <coughs> Traveler's Company, Traveler's Notebook, and I see myself using this for many years to come. So there you have it, my Midori. I'm still going to call it that. I much prefer that. Passport size traveler's notebook six years later. Yes, I still use it. Yes, I still very much like it. And I think I'll be using it for the foreseeable future. So thank you so much for watching. I've been a good friend, Bradley. You've been the audience. This has been Stuff and Things. I'll see you later. <laughs>